Lawyers are often characterized as blood-sucking parasites. The blood-sucking lawyer. <laughs> but they actually cause far more harm than their monikers. Thanks to our penchant for anthropomorphizing animals or placing their traits onto ourselves, many of the blood-sucking creepy crawlies of the world have been given bad raps. However, there are plenty that are just as bad as they seem. One such critter is a moderately sized leech with immodestly sized teeth that it uses to slice through your flesh to feed off the crimson liquid from your dark sarcophagus. Let's take a look at easily one of the best named leeches to ever live, Tyranobdala rex. Leeches are some of the most disgusting animals that we have a deep time connection to. In actuality, they are not really disgusting. Like most invertebrates associated with death, disease, blood, wounds, battlefields, and the like, they are the ones that clean things up or take stuff away. They aren't objectively disgusting, if that makes sense. In fact, many of these creepy crawlies are obsessive about keeping clean. I know you've watched a fly clean itself every 0.5 seconds. Leeches are gross because they suck blood like mosquitoes, but unlike mosquitoes, it's relatively rare for leeches to pass on diseases. This is because the only way for them to be disease vectors is if they throw up infected blood from their last host into your blood. So assuming they don't do that, they are relatively safe all things considered. This is probably part of the reason for their use in medicine for at least 2500 years. Their use pre-20th century was due to the belief in humors, that we have four types of bodily fluid and needed some of it taken out if we got sick or you know, something like that. Anyways, as the scientific method began to be applied to leech bloodletting or herudotherapy, it turned out there were some medical significance to it after all. The 1970s saw its use in microsurgery as the feeding activity and secretions of the leech helped stimulate blood circulation. Since then, valid uses for the beasts have included varicose veins, muscle cramps, thrombophlebitis, osteoarthritis, and more. Yeah, these guys secrete anti-inflammatory, anti-coagulating, anesthetizing, and vasodilating substances to help them just continue to suck you. These sorts of substances obviously have their place in medicine, so despite the poor execution of ancient doctors, their vibes were in the right place. Interestingly, leeches are the closest living relative of the group to which earthworms belong. If you compare the two on an anatomical level, you can see the many traits they both share. However, disturbing as that may be to you, leeches can be broadly divided into two major lineages. One that have jaws, the Arincobdelida, and one that have no jaws and move around inchworm style, the Rincobdelida. Though the largest leech on Earth is the aptly named Amazon giant leech, or Haementeria gilianii, at 450 millimeters, 17.7 inches long, and 100 millimeters, 3.9 inches wide, it's not necessarily the scariest. After all, it is a proboscis carrying form that just attaches its hypodermic needle mouth parts to your body. Far nastier blood sucking habits have evolved in the jawed lineage. One of them has the coolest name and wildest mouth parts. So how about I stop stalling and get to this monstrosity? In 1997, two young patients were admitted to two different health centers in different parts of Peru with semi-serious headaches. The first patient was a six-year-old boy with no symptoms of anything aside from the headaches. After hearing the patient's history and some inspection of the patient, the doctors were successful in pulling out a 2.5 centimeter leech from his right nostril. The critter was put in formalin for preservation and possible future analysis. The second patient, a 16-month-old boy, presented with the same symptoms and a similar history of bathing or playing in local bodies of water. The doctors pulled out a 6 cm leech from the boy's nose and then did the same preservation method. Then, in 2007, a 9 year old girl was admitted to another hospital in another part of Peru with the same symptoms as the first two patients, but this time she also reported a sliding sensation in her nose and her parents witnessed a black worm poking its little faceless head out of her nostril. This case resulted in a 6.5 to 7 cm black leech being pulled from her nose. This specimen was preserved in ethanol. 
It wasn't until 2010 that these three leech specimens were reanalyzed as possibly being a new genus and species of leech and published in PLOS One by a huge team of scientists from New York, Peru, and Taiwan. In this paper, they simply describe the critter and do some morphological and genetic analyses to see where it places on the leech family tree. Their work found that the critter was indeed new to science, and they named it, fittingly, Tyrannobdila rex, the Tyrant Leech King. Their reasoning for this name had to do with one of its defining features. Now, unfortunately, no images seem to exist online of what T-Rex looks like on the outside in color, so I cannot say if it's anything special to look at, but it's what's inside that counts with this T-Rex. The critter has only one jaw within its head section, a jaw containing a comparatively small number of comparatively giant teeth. T-Rex here uses this singular jaw to saw a cut into its host to get at that delicious crimson fluid of yours. The worst part is, as you may be able to surmise from the medical history of the beast, it belongs to a group of leeches that live inside you. Because of the lack of hypodermic needle proboscises, they have to get up really close to take your life essence. They also have a big ass sucker on their very last segment of their bodies, wider than any other part of their body. They will wiggle their way into your body via your nose, throat, rectum, urethra, or vagina, and then camp out in your mucous membranes with their giant butt sucker while they hacksaw their way through your most private and vital bits. Okay, that may be a slight exaggeration for T-Rex here, as they tend to prefer your mouth, nose, and throat. It has plenty of cousins that gravitate more towards your other bits, though. These leeches aren't the largest, but they're big enough to the point that the thought of them wiggling into your small holes and just sort of camping out in there seems hard to fully imagine. To make the concept a little easier to swallow, they tend to enter your body as just a wee little baby. It makes it easier to get inside you. They will suck and suck and suck until they reach as big as seven centimeters, but they don't tend to just leave you high and dry. Unlike its relatives, this thing will stay by your gaping open side for days and weeks. The traits that distinguish the Tyrant Leech King from all its leechy brethren are the singular jaw full of giant teeth I mentioned earlier, but also the fact that it has a lot fewer teeth than other leeches. The sucker on its butt is also a distinguishing trait as it is wider than the diameter of the rest of the body. All of these things, plus its addiction to the soft, moist mucous membranes of us memory gland carrying mammals, suggested to the scientist who described the beast that it likely belonged to the Proabdelidae family of leeches. Once they did some molecular tests on T Rex, they found that their hypothesis, using just the morphology of the new leech to determine where it places in the leech tree, was rather spot on. Its DNA found that it places as the closest relative to Pintobdelidae chiapasensis as a group that is sister to a group containing Myxobdela anandelae and Dinobdela ferox, all of which are in the Praobdelidae family. According to the Plus One publication, this tyrant leech king proved that the various species of leeches in the Praobdelidae family really did belong to a naturally closely related lineage of mucous membrane specialists that all share a single evolutionary origin, which had been in question before this paper. In fact, the description paper lined out how the systematics of leeches had been flipped on its head as DNA data began to be utilized to determine the precise evolutionary relationships between leeches. Thankfully, most of you probably don't have to worry about an infection by the tyrant leech king, as they are found only in the upper Amazon in Peru. However, it does seem like a good idea to spend as little time as you can in any source of fresh water, no matter where you are in the world, but especially in developing countries. Then again, if you're visiting these countries, you probably have the means to fight off anything you may contract with relative ease. So who cares? Go all out. YOLO. But now you know about one of the worst leeches out there, the Tyrant Leech King. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.